right, here we are at the bench for another episode of Penguin Honing. And what do we have out here today? Well, we have some of the typical penguins. Then we have this guy. This was the uh, holiday season penguin. It's going out in some orders, most orders, to my Etsy shop. I think he's kind of cool. Smaller than last year's penguin, so he fits in more boxes. Still squishy. He's a, like a stress reliever. You squeeze him when you get tweaked out. So it's good for people at home. If you run at the problem blades, you have your penguin. You can squeeze him until the tension is gone. <laughs> anyway, this video is about honing, obviously. And uh, the topic is the touch-up, touching up an edge. I've already done one, two, maybe three of these. I don't usually do touch-ups. I'm always more happy with the results when I do more of a full honing. I will do a touch-up if there's like something a little squishy about my edge that I'm not really down with and I don't really feel like going the whole nine yards or maybe I just want to test the stone out or something along those lines. So there are many ways to go, many options here at my house, there are many options. So um, this would be a stone that would be ideal for me. It's small. It's easy to deal with. Can hone handheld at the sink if I want to. What it is, it's a JNAT. Very, 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 very hard. All right, uh, Mizu Asahi uh, with Goma. And those are just visual traits. They don't really speak to performance. I'm just mentioning it for the sake of discussion. This one happens to have a Maruka stamp. Now, if you notice, um, stamps kind of like reverse. Normally, it would be the other way around. Now, recently someone brought up Marukas and started talking about Marukas and this like hushed tone woo type of thing. You know, people should get over that. Um, there are very few real Maruka stones out there right now. The, the stamp hasn't been used in a long time. All the stuff, I shouldn't say all the stuff, but a lot of the stuff being sold on auction sites is counterfeit. The Hadahoshis, all, all of that stuff. It's, you know, all fabricated for the tourist market. Um, there's stuff going on in the, uh, all right, this stamp is owned by uh, Hatanaka, okay? Hatanaka bought the rights to acquire the Nakayama mine from Kato back in the day. Um, this is one of his registered stamps. This doesn't get used. Uh, in, in modern times, it hasn't really been popular. I think it was something that got used way back. So basically, Hatanaka has series, different lines of stones, within his main brand, which is his own, Hatanaka Toishi, and then he has these little mini brands underneath it. The stamp itself, I mean, when it's legit, means it comes from him, so that speaks for one thing. But people talk about, oh, I got to have a Maruka. Why do you have to have a Maruka? Do you really think that the Maruka is going to be better than this stone? Well, actually, that is a Maruka. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, better than that? Do you really think that? You shouldn't think that because it's not true. Now, this is a Maruka. See a stamp? And this has no stamp. These both came from Hatanaka. Both came, like, right out of their special locker. They're very, very special stones. I actually, I hardly ever use them. To be completely honest, I haven't used this one yet. This is so good that I, I'm just waiting for one day when I just have, like, all afternoon to myself with... No dogs, no doorbells, no whatever, emergencies in the living room, nothing. Peace and quiet throughout the entire day when I can sit down and dig into this. I've had it for quite some time. I have a bunch of stones. I, I don't need to jump on that one right now. I was very fortunate to be able to get it. It's one of the last stones from Hatanaka before they uh, temporarily close shop while the family figures out what's going on. Anyway, this one I have used, and um, it is quite special. Now, back to the topic. The topic is touch up. So if I'm going to touch up the stone, uh, excuse me, if I'm going to touch up the razor's edge, do I want to have a full-blown honing session on a big stone? Do I want to, like, get extra wear on here that's harder to lap? And, uh, you know, because when, when I'm working in the finishing stage, I'm usually going to be working in this section here. It's easier to control your pressure on short laps. So I like to use like very, 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 very like butterfly featherweight pressure for my finishing strokes. So I, I work centrally located. So I, I'm wearing here, but not on the ends. And then I have to lap in like for what? All right. So what I do 
like to do is use a small stone sometimes. So there's that. But I don't always work on these. I sometimes I work on synthetic. So this is the 10K Shafting Glass. And it, it's an admirable finisher. You know, people love the Naniwara 12K and this and that. And uh, whatever your flavor choice is, doesn't matter. You know, I'm not going to get into like what is better. It's just a matter of what are you using and how do you go about it? So what is the touch up? Basically, it's just to like get that little bit of crispness back on your edge so when you're shaving you have some of that newly off the hone edge response to your whiskers now i'll be the first to say that it's a temporary fix if i do a, a touch up i'm going to be doing a rehone within a month that's on a regularly used blade this razor sees a lot of action and when i hone let's say i'm going to do on synthetics now i wouldn't actually finish on a 10k because i have jane ads and eschers and all types of stuff here but if i was going to finish on this and i could i could shave off of it um gives me a notably better edge than an ak <laughs> to be completely honest what i would do most of the time i would go 4k first then i would go to 10k and if i was going to use a jnat with tom and a girl slurry i would probably come in with ta coma slurry first but to keep it really simple because people want a quick fix to everything and you can't get by with it. What you can do is just do a little bit of some work with thumb on the gross light. Now you don't want to make a lot of slurry here. Now you know me, I like to use like a bunch of slurry so things stay more even, but this is supposed to be a quick fix, right? So, Basically, all I'm doing and be completely honest, <laughs> this didn't really need a touch up. <laughs> it's not going to hurt it. Now what I'm looking for on my tells. Now remember this blade has a little bit of a warp. So I'm going to work in two different sections. So and if you notice I started working the tip so I'm a little off the stump. See? I don't know if you can really get a grasp on that, but when I'm down flat, the toe is up, so I have to do this roll. If I want to keep it even. Now, people will ask, why did you move water around with your finger? Because I don't want to drag the blade over dry stone. It's winter time right now. It's January 2020. And water evaporates fairly quickly. This is not a thirsty stone. It's very hard. Water will pool on it for a while. But I did just lap it recently. Now, already, I have the edge back to, you know, a smoother spot. I can feel it on the stone. I can see it in the undercut. So let's just say this edge had actually sort of like fallen off notably. I guess I had like 20 shaves on it. Maybe you could have used a touch-up. I, I don't know. I, I don't recall shaving with it and being like, oh, I have to hone this. I just grabbed it because it's on the bench. I was originally going to use uh, a Japanese razor I've been messing with, but I changed my mind. I kind of want to make this razor the bench razor for honing videos. It means I'll probably hone it to death, but. Now what's nice here is that I can use the whole stone my wear will be pretty even. 
it's small, so when I do go to lap it, it laps really fast. It fits right in the middle of a, I don't know, it's like five inches long or something like that. It fits right in the middle of an eight inch plate. It's under three inches wide. So lapping it is a piece of cake. So for this type of work, stone like this is really optimum. Right now, while I'm doing this, I'm almost wasting time. Yeah, this doesn't need any more. So, I always wipe off with paper towel, never with cotton rags. Cotton leaves dust and threads on the edge that you can actually wind up chipping your edge with it. So, when I'm at the sink, this goes a lot faster. So, there's that. So, I just wanted to show if I was going to use the Shapton. These tend to slide around a lot. Because the back of the hone is made out of glass. Which has its attributes, I guess. Um, not my favorite. So I got a nice even coat on here. And boom. Now, you'll see Swarf on here. If I was honing, do a synthetic progression. It's all just sitting on the surface. Um, I would have less Swarf than that on 8K, and then at 12K, I wouldn't see anything. But because I'm kind of working backwards, that's the deal. Which is why I say touch-ups aren't as good as like doing a regular honing. So again, I have a roll and I'm getting a little swarf on the stone, but it's to be expected when I'm doing a touch up, the edge is a little ragged from use and from stropping and all that other good stuff. Just the way it is. Now to come back again, so that would be one touch up. Working on this would be like a different way to touch up. I would not be doing both, okay, because then I'm doing a full honing. I'm just demonstrating right now. So the last one that I'll show is this because, well, it's out and I don't get to use it that often, really. And it really is quite a special stone, but. Can you hear that? That's a beautiful sound. If I was going to use a full-blown stone. This is such a wonderful, wonderful stone to hone on. I have full undercut. Total glide across the length of the blade. Absolutely no distractions along the way. No hesitation. No bumples. No gritty feeling. So basically done. The basis of a touch up is to just give the edge a little bump. It is not an answer to the underlying core issue of edge wear. Remember, when you're shaving, your 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 blade is not wearing perfectly even all the way across. Okay, it's not like your face is flat and the edge is flat, and then you're just doing like mowing the lawn or cutting sod. That's not what's happening. You're using the tip more. You're using the middle more. You're using the rear more. 
There's more pressure in one place and then another. The whole thing isn't riding on your face all at once. So the steel is wearing in different rates in different parts of the blade. Generally speaking, I prefer to do more of a full honing. Doesn't mean I have to go back to bevel set, although I normally will go back to a 1K just because. But it's not like a lengthy uh, bit of work. The 4K I just showed you would do an admirable job of that. Or the 5K Shapton, or 3K Nani Watcho Serra, or a Superstone would all get me to the same place. All right, basically the bevel would be good because I had said it previously and I'm just truing it up and leveling it out. I do need to remove some, <clears throat> I do need to remove some steel to establish that. So that's why I need something maybe a little north of 1K, but definitely south of 8K because the 8K doesn't move a lot of steel. Anyway, so that's it for the touch up. If you have any questions, you have any ideas, post them down below. Remember, this is all about having fun. Honing is about having fun. So get out there and have some fun. Okay, take care. Talk to you soon.